Lydia, Tavon, and David. While we are waiting for our RV to arrive, our salesman Rick Hand from Fred's RV put together an informative video of a walkthrough of when an RV is being picked up. Lots of good information and references. His contact info is in the description below. Hello, uh, my name is Rick Hand. We're here at Fretz RV today, and we're going to do a walk around on the 2021 Pleasure Way On Tour 2.0. So we're starting here in the front. Uh, as we walk around, you can see you have an outside light. You have your awning. Back here, there's two ways to get water in an RV. One would be to hook up to a hose and uh, at a campground, and that would provide the water. The other way, of course, is to bring your water with you. And if you're gonna bring it with you, this is where you fill it up. There's just a cap, you put a hose in there. If you're at a campground, you can pour water in from a jug. Uh, there's a little vent here. If you overfill it, it's just gonna spill out. You won't hurt anything. Uh, they put a lock on here, which is nice, so if somebody were to tamper with your water, you can certainly see. Uh, this is a vent for your batteries. Uh, there's nothing for you to do with that. It's just required by the RV code. Here you have some outside plugs or whatever you'd want to plug in. This is a big magnet here. At these doors, there's a little latch here that you click to release the door. And then that'll come around and stick fast on the magnet like that. We might as well go around here. This is your, your receiver. There's wiring here for two different types of uh, trailer plugs, a flat four and a round seven way plug. Uh, under here, this is a 12 volt air compressor that'll plug into your cigarette lighter 12 volt outlet. And this, let me just have the belt stored here. These obviously would just tuck up through here if you want to use the it has shoulder belts here in the back, but uh, when you're not using them, you can pull them through. These are the blinds that go across the front. There's three pieces in here, uh, one for each door and one for across the, the windshield. They're kind of stuck in here. I'm not gonna get them out. But they have, they're shaped to go one on each door, one across the windshield, and then you fold the sun visors down to uh, hold the one on the windshield. They're kind of bulky, so some people just rig up a curtain of some sort, but uh, nonetheless, that's what these are. And then under here is your, your red key for your charge line disconnect, okay? And that's to disconnect your lithium batteries when the temperature drops below freezing. They don't like to be charged when it's cold. So that's where you disconnect them. I'll close this up. Oh, up here, this is your back screen. That just clips down and zips down each side. There's a separate panel here you can unzip so you can get to your cargo without rolling the whole thing up. Uh, it's a real nice design. When you get it down, you'll see that uh, it's pretty straight and forward. Coming around this side, this yellow cord is ours. This is the cord that comes with the RV. So this is your Truma AquaGo water heater. This lifts off like that and hangs down. This unit's now winterized, so I really can't demo the, the water heater. But when it's time to go, you just turn this on and a little light will come on here, an LED. There's two switches up or down that both say on, and it doesn't matter which way you turn it. To drain the water heater, you lower this, and then there's a plug that I'll show you inside that goes in here that you pull out when you winterize it. So you pull this plug out, and that drains the water out of the water heater for winterization. This is the vent for your Truma Vario heat uh, furnace. <clears throat> that just the hot air comes out there when you run the furnace. In here, you have your 
30 amp power cord connection. There's a hook up here for city water. It's just a straight forward uh, garden hose type outlet. Cable TV, if you have it, you could hook it up there at some campgrounds you can get cable. And this is on and off for your propane. The, the propane tank is permanently mounted underneath and there's a, a switch here that operates a solenoid that turns it off and on. So this is your outside shower. This pulls out five or six feet. You have hot and cold water and there's a shutoff here that you can turn it off once you get the water temperature where you want it. It's nice that they locate it here because directly below is your area to empty your waste tanks. You release these clips. This is a little catch here to hold it up. But under here is your, your sewer hose. It sits in this tray. It's two pieces that hook together. In some circumstances, if you're close to the dump, you would only need one. If you need two, you have them both there. And then over here is your connection for your sewer hose. This fitting here just screws right on there. And then you have two handles, black and gray. Uh, the black, obviously, is your, your black tank, your toilet, and the gray is your sink and your shower water. Uh, you just pull the black first is the typical procedure, and then the gray is going to rinse everything out. And then you have your shower right here. If you need to wash up or rinse anything off, it's all good to go. These just click like that. It's a real nice design. The fuel doors here... So to get gas, you have to open the door. But when the door is closed, then your fuel's locked. So that's nice. On the Fords, all new Fords have a tank or a capless fuel fill. You just stick the nozzle in there, and when you pull it out, it shuts. There's no cap to under it. In the glove box is a little funnel that if you'd ever run out of gas, and someone came to rescue you, you could put the little funnel in there and pour gas in out of a can. Okay, so here we are under the hood. Again, there's not a whole lot to talk about under here, but just your basics. Um, the battery is down remote on this, so they give you an area here. Oops, I dropped the cap. Here to uh, connect to the battery for a jump start if you'd ever need to. And then over here, is a lug for the ground. So that's that. Uh, this is your air intake. All your air comes in through the cowl here, down into here, and this is your washer fluid. Back here is a dipstick. Everything you need to get to is marked with bright colors so you can easily see what's going on. So we'll let that go for now. There's a, a pretty extensive Ford uh, owner's manual that comes with it that covers all the, the chassis maintenance for you. While we're here at the doorway, this is your screen, which is pretty intuitive here. There's nothing fancy. You just unclip these and it zips down both sides. Then you have a magnet here to uh, get in and out without unzipping it. And there's even down low here, there's a little Velcro tab that if you have a little dog or something, you could you could clamp that and it makes it a little bit harder to, to just push through the, the, uh, the magnet. So now and up here is your inverter. So when we turn on the inverter, before we do that, you can notice down here that your, your microwave is dead and your cooktop isn't lit up. So we have no AC power in here at all. So I turn on my inverter and again it takes a little bit for the transfer switch to catch up there you heard the beep and the click and now we're lit up here and our microwaves lit up so now we have ac power and the pleasure way unlike some of uh, our competitors like leisure travel just uh, inverts a couple of outlets every outlet is inverted the outside outlets the kitchen any outlets in here are now inverted to the to the Sure power, 110 volt power. You got cabinets, you got your cooktop, convection microwave. I'm sorry, this is just a, a standard microwave in the in the 2.0. But there's a nice selection of drawers here, here, 
I wanted to take a few minutes and go over this blue bag that you get. There's a lot of goodies in here. Uh, this is a right angle connector for your sewer hose. A lot of times in a dump station, uh, this will come in handy. They give you some extra caps here for your sewer hose connections. You probably want to get a little Tupperware container or maybe a, a real heavy duty Ziploc bag to keep this in. When obviously you know what it's for, so you want to rinse it out good and keep it sealed up. Um, these are the remotes. You have your TV, it's a LG Smart TV, Bose soundbar. Up in the cabinet is your uh, Blu-ray disc player. And also in here is the books for those uh, appliances for all the settings and whatnot. You get your Ford manuals. These are the standard uh, transit van manuals. This is important. This is an emergency crank for your uh, Fiamma awning. There's a cap on the leading uh, end of the awning that you could insert this and, and manually crank it in if you'd ever have a problem with it while you were on the road and at least get it in so you could get home and, and worry about it later. This is your book. Uh, these are online. Uh, unfortunately, to the best of my knowledge, this is still the old the old uh, book for the 2021s, not the 21 and a halfs is what they're calling this. So it doesn't have the newest uh, spider panel touchscreen on it, but 90% of the stuff is the same. And uh, hopefully very soon we'll have the new ones online. So everything you get in here comes with its own book, the fridge, the heater, even the smoke detector, everything. So they all are in that bag. This is the plug or filter, combination plug filter for the Truma water heater. This gets inserted in that yellow chute and then you close it and it forces it in. And uh, when you open it, that's how you drain the water heater. And uh, we're gonna deliver it to you winterized. And uh, there's all kinds of videos. There's instructions in here on, on dewinterizing. It's pretty straightforward. So we'll put all this stuff back in here. Our techs, when they, when they do the pre-delivery inspection, they do run the TV and the Bose soundbar and uh, set everything up so to make sure it's all in work in order for you. This is pretty slick. This is the, the lagoon table. You've probably seen this on videos and whatnot. There's three handles. You can adjust the height here. You can tighten or loosen this part here. And then underneath is a, a knob to loosen the top. If you get the height just right and spin it, these are funny because they're, they're off center, but a lot of people could put that here and use it as cooktop surface area. This will all come apart. You just loosen it up, pull that off, you loosen this up and take that off. And then this comes like that. This will store on here like that. And this will store on here like that. These kind of ratchet, if you run out of room to tighten them, you just pull them back a little. And then there's a, a spot behind the driver's seat that this will stand vertical and there's two little tabs to hold it in place. So that's kind of nice. If you want to get it out of the way, you can. One of the nice things on this is they mount the, the bracket on this side. Some of them it's on the back. So in this case, you could still um, recline your sofa with your table in place. If you just wanted to take a quick nap, you wouldn't have to necessarily move the table. Some of them you do. But there's your sofa extended all the way back. In this closet against the wall are your bed boards. They go across here. And then these back cushions fill this in to make it one big bed if you like. Some people just leave this open and kind of sleep on it as twin beds. But uh, you have your option, obviously. One of the things I like about this sofa is you can stop it wherever you want. So if you just want to lean back and 
read or watch TV. You have all kinds of options to get comfortable there. Uh, moving around, these blinds all have little magnets built into them and then there's steel plates down here so you can get them just the right length if you get the hang of it and then they'll, oops, I got it too long. They'll stick. Huh. Gotta get the right touch, there you go. And then they'll stick, stick like that. And that's all of them, the back, the front. There's one here that comes down. Same deal. Okay, so moving around back here, this strap releases the TV. It, it locks in place for travel, and then you have the option to swing it out. And you can see this just pulls this little pin which latches it in. Your sound bar is fixed here permanent. Um, it sounds really good. You pair that to the TV. It has Bluetooth. You can pair your phone to the sound bar and, and listen to music or podcasts, whatever you like. Uh, all these cabinets open straight up. Real nice residential style hardware, real high quality. Uh, this back panel, like we talked before, has all the functions of the front panel, lighting, uh, your power, everything's here, except there's no red switch to disconnect the batteries, and there's no uh, control for your awning here. But everything else is the same. And you can go to backlight and just turn it off if you want. Up in here, this is your LG Blu-ray player. Everything's plugged in here, your soundbar, your TV, your Blu-ray. There's a reset switch here for your induction. Uh, I'm not sure this one I think is for your, yeah, this is for your microwave. There's a label there. This is your antenna. It has a, a WineGuard uh, digital powered TV antenna. You hold this button and turn it on and it kind of gets itself set up and then it's on. So now uh, you get broadcast TV. We get 25 or 30 channels right here. It'll get HD signals. Uh, most people are surprised at the reception they get. One thing you want to remember though, this is a slight draw on your batteries. So if you just leave it on and have your batteries connected, it will slowly but surely use some power. So uh, the best practice would probably be to turn it off when you aren't using it. So that's all up there. Down here is another outlet with a, with a GFI on it. This is your propane and carbon monoxide alarm. This is the breakers for all your 110 volt stuff. You just have to get down low and have good eyes, but it's your receptacles, your microwave, your shore power, your air conditioning, your inverter, all that. I think under here, these are Velcroed on. Under here is access to the back of your water heater. You have your valves for winterizing. And then here's a schematic for all your DC power, your 12 volt power. So I won't take a lot of time with all that, but that's where it's all found. Winterizing is something that you'll just have to read up on when the time comes. So moving along, in here, this is what I was saying is your bed boards. There's little clips here that hold them in place when you're not using them. And then the fridge. This has the newest version of a compressor refrigerator. So we just turn that on by pushing the button. Up here is the temperature. You know, you just have to experiment with that, whatever is uh, right for you for, for your settings. And then this little moon is a power uh, conservation setting that you can turn that on and that'll maintain the temperature in the fridge with the minimum amount of power usage. Uh, the moon obviously indicates it's for overnight that you're, they don't figure you're gonna be open in the fridge to, uh, to use any power in there. So you can save power if you're, if you're boondocking living off your batteries. 
But these new fridges, it's it's a compressor fridge, like I said, and they get cold real fast. You don't have to worry about being level like the old uh, gas absorption refrigerators. Uh, down here, you have some vents for your heater. You have the intake for the heater. The microwave we talked about is down there. Uh, the air conditioner is up above Nikki's head there. That's pretty obvious. There's little flaps you can adjust to, to uh, control the airflow. In the bathroom here, again, there's not a whole lot to talk about. If you've never used a foot flush toilet, these operate with this pedal. You put it about halfway down, and when you're hooked up to water, if you have your water pump on, this is going to flow water into the bowl, and you can fill it up as full as you want, and you use it, and then to flush it, you just hold the pedal down, and as long as you're holding that, water's going to flow into the bowl, so you can rinse it out. And it's nice, not like a home toilet, where you use the same amount every flush. You control how much water you use by how long you hold the pedal down. Your shower's in here. These are the only lights that don't work off the, the spider panel. You just touch these to uh, turn them off and on. You have a shower curtain here, there's a little towel bar. Um, it's everything you need in a nice compact space. Uh, here's your smoke detector for uh, safety. They give you that along with the propane and carbon monoxide and then there's a fire extinguisher here by the door. Like I said, there's clips here behind the driver's seat for your lagoon table to mount vertically right here. Um, as you can see, these chairs turn around. This is the handle to release the chairs. You just have to be careful. You want to have them forward a little bit or, well, this one's in a good spot, but sometimes you have to scooch them forward a little or they'll hit the door. These little black things here are your sensors for the thermostat. So if you're curious, that's what they are. Uh, all your controls for the majority of the, the systems in here are, are in this touch screen. And then there's one in the back that's just about identical. So this red switch here is your battery cutoff switch. So I turn that on, that boots this up. And uh, here we have our home page. You have the home, you have lighting, you have your power, and you have your mechanical. And then this is diagnostic. So we start here on the home screen. and I like to say there's kind of four sections here. This top section is your climate control. So here where it says mode um, is off. This is our inside temperatures 58. I can turn this to air conditioning. I can turn it to your Truma Vario heat. You see the little flame lights up and then I can set the temperature by just scrolling this. It's pretty cool. So in a minute, the heat will come on. Of course, you have to have your propane turned on, which I do, and uh, that'll fire up your heat. The fan is for your air conditioning. So you can have it on automatic. When you start the air, it's gonna come on full force, or you can back it down to low or high. Down here, they give you just basic um, lighting, just to, to get in the vehicle. You can put on your porch light, which is your big LED light up over the door. Your entry light is just that. The awning lights you can put on here. And uh, here's backlight is just the lighting for the, for the screen. And then you touch it anywhere and it's gonna come right back on. Um, no. Here's Ben, turn her off. So these lights here, your entry light, if you hold this in, you can dim it like this. And then go back. So you have your climate control, you have your lighting here. This is your DC power is your 12 volt batteries in the back, your lithium batteries. This shows we're at 100%. We're 13.7 volts, which you're gonna run between 13 and 14 as a general uh, range that your battery voltage is going to show. And this is a new feature to this upgraded screen is your temperature in the batteries. So here we're at 36 degrees. So we had talked about disconnecting the batteries when it's below freezing and then warming up the interior until it's warm enough to reconnect them. And this would be your guide right here.
This is a real time uh, usage, how many amps you're using at any given time, whether it's charging or discharging, it's gonna show you here. We're plugged in right now, so we just have a light on and we're, we're just even. We have as much coming in as going out. Down here is your gen start. This is where you would uh, manually start your generator. You just push the button to start it and push the button to stop it. This box here shows your source of power. Right now it shows that we're on shore power. Down here is the water pump. If you're hooked up to a hose, that's gonna provide the water. It's gonna provide the pressure. You don't have anything, you don't need this at all. If you're drawing water out of your own holding tank, then you need to pump it out. You need to pressurize the tank. So you put this on. When these turn blue, they're on. So uh, with the Truma winterized, I don't wanna run the winter water pump right now, but you just push that and you'll hear it pop, up, up, up for 10 or 15 seconds, then it'll turn off. And if you open the faucet and the pressure drops, it'll come back on. And same with your heater. This isn't gonna let me run the water heater because it's, it's winterized. There's no water. But ordinarily, when you're in your use mode, you would hit this, a screen would come up, you can set the temperature for the water heater, and you can set the mode. There's an instant mode where you can have rapid hot water, that you're not wasting water waiting for it to get hot, or there's a comfort mode that if you're hooked up to water and it doesn't really matter, then you can conserve propane by not maintaining uh, hot water all the time and just wait a little bit for it to for it to heat up. Now this, I'm making this video today, uh, prior to us doing our pre-delivery inspection, this is just how it came off the truck, but I wanna get it done sooner than later. So uh, this is shows your propane here is empty. Uh, we're gonna fill it uh, prior to delivering the vehicle. And here will be the, the level of your freshwater tank, your gray and your black. So everything's displayed right here. Uh, for you to see. So this is your home screen, just gives you all the basics. Here you can go to your lighting screen. Now this just expands to all the lights and your, your dimmers are here. So we can put on the living room light, your sofa and balance lights, your reading lights are back above the sofa, and here's your kitchen lights. And all these have dimmers. And then there's a master switch here. This will turn on or off all the lights except the outside lights. So if I turn this off, my outside lights stay on. I can turn it on and they all come back on. So that's pretty straightforward. This here is your power management screen. So there's some redundancy here. This shows that your DC power is 100%. Your batteries just are at 36 degrees now. There's your voltage. Here's another view of our uh, real-time amp meter. And then down here, it gives you estimated time remaining. Now we're plugged in now, so we have infinite amount of power. We could stay here forever, but uh, I'm gonna unplug it in a minute and you'll see what happens when I do that. Uh, here's your solar charger. So if you're tech-minded, you can monitor your, your volts, your charge volts, your charge amps. Here we're indoors in the garage, so there's no charging going on. You can turn the solar off if you want. Uh, I'm, not, I'm told that the solar controller in itself uses a little bit of power. So if you were in storage, you didn't want it to charge or you're in a building, you could turn it off here. Up here, this is your DC, your battery. This is your AC power, which would be your shore power or power off your inverter. So here it shows your voltage, your amps. Uh, over here, these green lights tell you that you have power to operate your microwave or your cooktop. Obviously, we're plugged into shore power, so we're going to have all the power we need. If I unplug it, it's going to go, I can put on the inverter or I could run on the generator. Down here is another way to manually start the generator. I'm going to unplug it in a minute and we'll run it for just a few seconds here inside the building and I'll show you some of these other features. Down here, 
is your mechanical. So this is where you would extend or retract your sofa to make a bed. Here we would extend the awning, maybe. Can you see that, Nikki? Mm -hmm. So we can run the awning out, stop it wherever you want. But we might as well give you the whole show here. There's full extension. And obviously, the further you have it out, the less stable it is. So you have to be careful of the wind. There's a sensor on here. If it starts shaking too much, it will draw itself in. But I've seen some real bad, bad damage from wind uh, getting on your awning. So just be real careful with that. This is kind of nice. You can show your lights here. If I go to awning lights, I can, I can dim them out there. So at night, you could just have a real nice little, little glow if you want. So that's your awning. We'll, we'll bring that in. And again, you can stop this wherever you want. If you just want a little shade for the door, you can put it out halfway or just a few feet. If it was a little breezy, you might want to not put it all the way out. You'd have a little more strength to it. But you just keep holding it. You stop it wherever you want, but you keep holding it. It just parks itself. There's nothing you have to do. It'll just stop when it gets all the way, all the way in. And that's it. So this little area here, it says awning disabled. This will light up if you have the key on. It won't let you put the awning out if your ignition's on. The, the screen in the back, which we'll, we'll look at in a little bit here, is identical to this, except it doesn't have a control for the awning. To put the awning out, you have to be up front. And it also doesn't have a battery disconnect button out back. So the third thing you do from this panel here is your fan. So this is the lid for your vent. You can either open it or close it manually. Uh, but if you put the fan on, it's going to automatically open. And run at 100%. And then here I can go 80%, 60, 40, whatever you want. I do a demo on these where I turn this fan on with the whole van closed up and the motor actually starts straining uh, trying to suck a vacuum in here. Uh, you open one of these windows and the air just floods in. It really, it really works well. So you can go all the way down to 20 or, or back up to full speed. And then you could just turn the fan off and leave the lid open. Or if the fan's on and you close the lid, it'll automatically turn the fan off. So you can you have a couple of options to play with there. So the last screen on your on your spider panel here is this kind of diagnostic and screen setting. So here you can change it to Celsius. You can change the brightness of your panel. There's screen settings that you can um, change it from negative to positive. You can have it turn off after a certain amount of time if you just leave it alone. There's all kinds of different settings on here that you can, you can uh, play around with. You can adjust your lighting buttons. There's different things. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And then you also can go here to diagnostics and here's all your circuits. I'm not a, a real technician, so I don't understand a lot of this, but you can get as far into this as you want. But I know our service guys like it because it is easy to find if there ever is a problem. And then here's your faults, which of course there's none. On this one here, it shows your battery stats, your battery temperature slowly coming up. We're up to 37 now. And uh, here's your battery health and diagnostics. So discharge cycles, all that uh, battery health is 100%. So this would be a useful screen to, to monitor as your ownership progresses. So we go back here to your home screen and then the backlight would, would turn the whole thing off. So now, uh, before we leave the screen here, I've gone and unplugged the from shore power. So now we're running off of our batteries. You can see we got 100% power. Um, we're using five amps. I got all the lights on in the thing, even the outside lights. We're using five amps of power. And our AC source says uh, NA. There is no AC source. 
So if we go here, again, it shows there's no, no source of power. We still have enough power to run our appliances, our cooktop and our microwave right off the batteries. But now that we don't have shore power at 100% with all the lights on, this tells you if we sat here just how we are, we'd have power remaining estimated a day and 10 hours. So that's kind of fun. You can, you can play around with that. So here we are uh, back to the generator. So now that I'm unplugged, I can run the generator for you. This shows the hours, which just hasn't run yet at all since it's brand new. But uh, you can manually start and stop the gen here. You just hold this down. Give it another try here. There you go. And these new generators are really, really quiet. We're inside here and it's, it's real quiet. So that's your gen run. And it takes a few minutes for the power to transfer over. I don't want to run it too long because we're indoors here. Here, we just went to a 10th of an hour on our timer. There, you heard that beep and the click. And now we show AC power on generator. So it takes a minute for the transfer switch to to pick up on the gen, but now we have full power and we're running on the generator. I'm gonna shut that off so we don't gas ourselves here. Uh, over here is your AGS. AGS is auto gen start. So with auto gen start, there's two settings. First is to set it. So this the bottom one is set. And here you have two choices. Just about everybody does easy setup. And then it's uh, real straightforward. You just have to read and follow the directions. So when would you like the gen to start? When the house batteries are low and need to charge or when the climate control needs power? And you can choose yes or no to any of those. And then you go next, uh, starting for low battery. Start the gen when the battery is lower than. And they all, on all these settings, they have a min, max, and then a, a recommend for the from pleasure way. So, 40% is what they recommend, and then stop when it's 100%. So that's that's pretty simple. And then here uh, is your climate control. So once your, your AC meets the temperature setting, how long do you want the generator to continue to run? You don't want it to turn off instantly or it would cycle off and on too much. So they say, run it another 10 minutes. So that's, and you can adjust this up or down however you like. So that's their recommendation. And then how long should it run if necessary to maintain the temperature? So if you're in a parking lot in, in Arizona and, and it's just gonna have to run constant, they say don't run it more than maybe two hours. So this has settings. You just bump this back down to, to 120 is their recommended time. And then the last screen here is for quiet times. You can set this that it doesn't come on uh, when you don't want it to. So if you're watching TV and the battery would dip down a little bit, it wouldn't automatically start up at, at midnight. So you can adjust this to whatever time you want for it to start and when you want it to start to finish. And then you hit finish and that's it. Now to enable it, you know, the, the danger would be you don't want to run your generator when you're inside. So, and you don't want to run it when you're hooked up to shore power. So they give you these warnings and then to enable it, you have to press the continue button and hold it for five seconds. This is just to make sure that you know that you're setting it and that someone interacted with this. It didn't get set uh, accidentally. And I think that's about it. I'm not gonna take a lot of time going over the chassis features. It's all pretty straightforward Ford controls and uh, you have the Ford manual that goes through all that. So I think that's good. Enjoy. Enjoy.